Hey there, this is Math 2, Unit 5, Worksheet Number 3, just doing some homework help today, looking at a set of problems just to review with you to make sure you're on the right track. So starting with number 5, it says list three things that are true about the diagonals of a rhombus. So when you're dealing with the rhombus and the diagonals, we know that the diagonals are going to be perpendicular to each other, okay? Perpendicular to each other, meaning they're going to be 90 degrees when you cut those things in half there, okay? We also know that those diagonals are going to bisect each other, meaning they're going to have equal sides to them. Okay, so again, if I have my shape like so, and I draw a line, draw a line, I'm going to have a 90 degree angle right there. I'm also going to say that's going to be equal, and those are going to be equal there. The other thing with the rhombus is that I'm creating angle bisectors by doing so. Okay. I need to know those three things in order to answer the next questions down below. I'm going to do number six and number seven. All right, so here we go. Number six, first off. Okay, so 54 is going to be up here. We know that if that's a 54 and that's a 54, we can say that safely. Um, this angle measurement right here would also be 54 degrees. Okay, now because this is an isosceles triangle like this, the bases are going to be equal, which means that angle 2 and angle 3 would also be 54 degrees. And then what do I have left for the top of the triangle? If that's 54 and that's 54, that's a sum total of 108. So what I have left in the triangle for this top measurement there is going to be 72 degrees. So that's going to be 72 degrees, and the opposite angle will also be 72 degrees. Looking at number seven. For number seven, if I have a 68 here, again, it's isosceles triangle with those marks right there, that makes angle two also 68 degrees. And if angle two is 68, this is an angle bisector right there, that makes angle three also 68 degrees. Because these are two diagonal lines crossing and going across the rhombus, that makes angle four equal to 90 degrees because it's perpendicular. Okay, which makes this one 90 degrees as well because it's perpendicular. So I could look at it a couple ways. I have a 90 and a 68 for a total of 158 inside of this triangle right here, 158. And what's left is 180 minus 158, which is going to be 22 degrees left for the measurement of angle one. There are several ways to get there, but that's just one way of doing it. Okay, number 10. List two things that are true about the diagonals of a rectangle. Okay, for the diagonals of a rectangle, those ones there, we would say the diagonals are going to be congruent. Okay, that's the first thing we would say. The second thing we would say, like a rhombus, is they bisect each other. Okay. So what we're not saying is we're not saying they're perpendicular and we're not saying it's an angle bisector. The only thing is similar is that they bisect each other, meaning that matches that and that matches that. So let's use that information to answer number 11. Okay, we have a rectangle. Okay, here it is. Here's our rectangle there. Just gonna draw one out. We call it H, I, J, and K. Does it find the value of x and the length of each diagonal? It says that hj, this length right here, is 3x plus 5. And it says that ik, this length right there, that one there, is 5x minus 9. We just said that the diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So we'd set them equal to each other. 3x plus 5 equals 5x minus 9. So I'm going to subtract 3x over there, move that guy there, so I have 2x. I'm going to add 9 over here, so 5 plus 9 is 14, divide by 2, and x equals 7. But I'm not done, I need to plug that value back in, so I can plug it into hj. So I have 3 times 7 plus 5 is 21 plus 5, 21 plus 5 is 26. If I chose to plug it back in there, I could, but I know that they're going to be congruent, so I don't need to. And I can just leave it as 26 for the other length as well. Okay, let's look at the next side. 
Number 15. For what value of x is parallelogram w, x, y, z a rhombus? Okay, so for this to be a rhombus, this would need to be an angle bisector, right? That would mean that 22 degrees has to equal 2x. So I divide by 2, divide by 2, and so if x equals 11, then I have an angle bisector with a diagonal, and it means I also have a rhombus. For number 16, for what value of x, oh sorry, sq, so sq, this whole length right there is equal to 14, okay? So for what value of x is parallel on PQRS a rectangle? So a rectangle, remember with a rectangle, our diagonals are gonna be congruent on a rectangle. So that would mean that if I took the 3x minus 11, it should be equal to, because it's half, half of the big length. Well, half of 14 is seven. So I'm gonna do 3x, I'm gonna add 11 over here, equals 18, which means x is gonna be equal to six. Okay, so my length of PT, if I plug it back in there, three times six is 18 minus 11. 18 minus 11 is seven. And PR, the whole thing, is going to be the same as the other one, 14, just like so. Number 17, find the value given the special parallelogram. So we have a rhombus here. All right, so with this rhombus, what's interesting is I know that the uh, consecutive interior angles are going to be equal to 180 degrees. But I'm only having part of that. This is a bisector, which means that if that's 2x plus 1, then this measurement is also, oops, 2x minus 1, sorry, I said plus, but 2x minus 1. So this and this and this will all add together to be 180 degrees, okay? So we can stack them up if you want to. So 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 4 more is 8x. I have minus 1, minus 1 is minus 2, 28 minus 2, 28 minus 2 is 26, so 8x plus 26 is equal to 180 degrees. I subtract 26, subtract 26, 8x is equal to 154, and when you divide that by 8, you don't get a pretty number, it's not too bad. x is equal to 19.25, and that's what we get there. All right, number 18, this is a square. Okay, it's a square, but it's also square is also a special kind of rhombus, and because it's a rhombus, we're going to be cutting this apart there, which makes this an angle bisector, right? Now, a square it starts off at 90 degrees. If I'm bisecting it, I'm cutting it in half, which makes it equal to 45 degrees. That part there, 7x plus 3, is equal to the 45 degrees. So I add, I'm going to subtract 3. 7x is going to equal 42 which makes x equal to 6. Number 20, I have a rhombus here. We want another measure of angle PMN. So this whole thing, right, sorry, oh, not really. We want x. This whole thing right there is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, got it. Now, because it's a rhombus, that means that this is also a, again, angle bisector. So we can take 5x, I can think of this way. I can multiply it by 2, and that's going to be equal to 110, okay? If I have two of those, it's 110. So 10x equals 110, which makes x equal to 11 for number 20. And finally, number 23 on this one here. Um, okay, we have some different little shapes there. We have a 90 degree angle here because it's a rhombus and at the bisector we're going to have perpendicular lines which means I have 90 degrees there. No problem with that one. Okay, Because it's 90 degrees and it's a triangle, that triangle is going to have a sum total of 180. I've already used up 90, right? So that means these two together are going to be what's left over. Well, what's 180 minus 90? 90. So I could say that 2x minus 13 plus 7x minus 5 is equal to what's left? 90. So 2 plus 7 is 9x. 13 and a 5 becomes a negative 18. That 
equals 90. I add 18 to both sides. And 9x equals 108. Divide by 9. So that x equals 12. And that's the solution there. Hope that helps you out a little bit. Have a great day.